I, I love this story because Art Laffer convinced then President Trump to push through this transparency in hospital pricing. Right. They are now forced to put down what everything costs and People like you are saying, what the heck? What happened? Mm -hmm. what exactly. Happened? In this compelling debate, ARK Invest's Kathy Wood and Gerber Kawasaki's Ross Gerber explore the game-changing potential of AI, particularly ChatGPT, in revolutionizing healthcare and medical research. Wood enthusiastically highlights AI's capacity to accelerate drug discovery, personalize medicine, and enhance diagnostics, envisioning a future where AI-driven tools significantly improve patient outcomes and reduce costs. Gerber, while acknowledging AI's promise, advocates for cautious optimism, emphasizing the need for rigorous testing and ethical considerations. He raises important questions about data privacy and the responsible development of AI in healthcare. Both agree on AI's transformative power, but differ on its immediate impact and long-term implications, offering viewers a balanced perspective on this cutting-edge technology's role in shaping the future of medicine. Let's hear more on this debate between Kathy Wood and Ross Gerber. In drug discovery, Ch uh, ChatGPT uh, is, uh, is creating uh, tremendous opportunities. We're learning things that human beings just hadn't even thought of before. And so it's kind of shaking up that world, which is very exciting. We think that uh, the, con well, AI, we think is going to um, shorten the time between, you know, discovery and development and you know, so trials, fewer failures. So uh, we think that, and the reason we keep loading up on these multiomic names is the convergence between DNA sequencing, which I uh, described earlier, artificial intelligence and some of these new therapies like CRISPR gene editing um, are, are, are going to create an explosion in new therapies, you know, and, and actual cures. So Genetics. them are harnessing AI. They have to be, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure, especially the genetic companies where you have so much data. Right, so, yeah, our largest holding is uh, CRISPR Therapeutics. Right, CRISPR. Yep. Twist Biosciences in more the synthetic biology space. Um, Intelia, which is also in uh, the, the gene editing space. Those are three important ones. Well, our, our chief futurist, Brett Winton, just he, half of his face was just almost destroyed by in a soccer accident and uh, fractured six bones and everything. And he said, he learned more about his condition and what to expect when by consulting ChatGPT than he did from the medical, uh, you know, a a anyone taking care of him medically. Wow. So I, I, I think it is going, that's what I love. I mentioned earlier, young people, they're going to be doing this kind of research. Um, it's an interesting area of investing too because Tech investors don't love health care. VCs, yeah, right. Right. they don't like health care. There's regulation, there's reimbursement, there's all kinds of their privacy, there's all kinds of friction. And health care uh, investors haven't been crazy about technology because they like to move fast and break things. And so, you know, watching for the companies that are going to bring these two things together, I think is going to be one of the most exciting yeah. um, opportunities we're going to find out there. I think many people are, are just the last thing. Yeah. Um, I used to make this analogy. <clears throat> you know the, the, the Mad Men days, 1960s with advertising. Uh, you, you know the Kevin was born in the 90s. Stop. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> the, um, the saying back then was, I know that half of my advertising works. I just don't know which half. And now, and now we can... I think it was, it's worse in healthcare. I honestly think, and it's not the fault of do doctors um, necessarily. They didn't have the science or knowledge because we couldn't sequence the genome. It was prohibitively expensive. Now we have the knowledge and we're going, I think we waste more than half of our healthcare dollars because our society is so litigious 
uh, and doctors fear being sued. So too many surgeries, too much medicine, and I think that's going to change radically, and we're going to take more of healthcare into our own hands. As we just heard about AI, let's now dive into the consumer macroeconomics, the importance of data, and learn more about the economy. Wood and Gerber shift their debate to these crucial topics. Wood emphasizes the importance of high-quality data in driving economic decisions and AI development. Gerber, while acknowledging AI's potential, expresses concerns about its impact on income inequality and job displacement. He stresses the need for policies to support affected workers and ensure ethical data use. Both agree that understanding consumer behavior and macroeconomic trends is crucial as AI reshapes the economy. Let's listen more from Kathy Woods and Ross Gerber as they highlight the growing importance of data literacy for both businesses and consumers in this evolving landscape. This conference might have something to do with that. It still costs money, and if you walk around here, and these are not looking, the wealthiest I'm people. Looking at these macro, are normal I'm, people, and they're I'm, I'm spending lots at, of money. I'm looking at macro indicators. It's what we do uh, just to understand the backdrop, and they are looking worse and worse with time. 3.6% saving rate. You go back to 08, see that saving rate. When people get worried that they're going to lose their jobs, and, and today it's not just lower income or middle income, some of these tech jobs, uh, people are losing tech jobs yeah. because of AI. Um, when they get worried, the saving rate goes up. It's human nature. I've got to, I, I, like I can't spend as much I need, you know, just in case I lose my job. And I think if you look in the University of Michigan, uh, I think this was the survey, sentiment index, I think 70% of people making more than $100,000 are afraid of losing their jobs. It's skyrocketing here. And I do think technology has something to do with it. Well, housing is. Autos are, are, are in a funk. I think whatever Tesla reports I mean, is those are economic. Inst instant rate, in, uh, in, interest rate sensitive. Office, office multifamily. And now we're hitting the consumer. I mean, that's pretty, and capital spending as well. Pretty broad based. Uh, are, are you listening to company reports when they report earnings? Yes. Other than the Mag 6? Yes. There's a lot of pain out there. There are companies that are very economically sensitive. If you look at UPS revenues, they've been down single, down, not growth rate lower, but revenues actually falling. Uh, 3M. Uh, we've got China exporting deflation. I, I think company well, China, reports- China's got a lot of issues. Uh, company reports, and we have exposure to China, Europe has exposure to China. Um, I think company re uh, reports uh, defy um, the, 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 the thought that this economy is doing well. It's just not. Why, according to the University of Michigan, are consumers so miserable? Like I don't, I don't care about surveys. I think surveys are extremely misleading no, because not. when people fill out surveys, there's biases that are inherent when you fill something out. And I think you have to look at many indicators and, and we use a lot of real world indicators. And I spend a lot less time on data. Okay. Well, you should spend more time on data. Well, the problem is all the data is hindsight. Meaning, meaning data has to be collected data. and it's old. So company by the time data. you read it, it's, it's been collected and it's now hindsight. So what we're really trying to say is what's happening moving forward. And, and the way we do that is by looking at things like what people are actually doing tonight. So I do that every quarterly report season. I'm on lots of company calls just to learn more about the economy, even if we're not invested in them, they're not doing well, except for the exalted few. If you I'm going to tell the people in my firm that you call me you, a value investor. Well, I often say if you give us five years, we're a deep value manager. What do you say to that? I think value, there's intrinsic value the way Kathy sees it, and, and she could be 100% correct. I, I think several of her stocks we own and, and have tremendous opportunities, and I think the way Kathy looks at the world is very uh, innovative and very futuristic, and I think there's a lot of opportunity when you think that way. I, I think a lot of investors spend too much time looking at numbers and PE ratios and not enough time thinking about the future, which is what I think ARC does very well. Um, and, and your team Thank is, you. is- It is the team, the team is- Yeah, your team is great. Team. As we conclude, it's clear that both Wood and Gerber recognize AI's transformative potential 
while differing on the pace and impact of its adoption. Their discussion highlights the complex interplay between technological advancement, economic indicators, and societal concerns. We'd love to hear your thoughts on some questions. How do you think AI will impact job markets in the next five to 10 years? And what steps should individuals take to prepare for this shift? In your opinion, how can we balance the need for extensive data and AI development with concerns about privacy and ethical data use? Thank you for tuning in to Only the Savvy. Remember to like, subscribe, and share this video if you found this debate on AI and medicine insightful. Join us next time for more expert discussions on the intersection of technology.